and welcome to Dudley Zoo in Castle, where you join us here in our tapir enclosure. Uh, and you join us on a very special day, it's actually World Tapir Day. Now there are four different species of tapir in the world. There is the Malaysian tapir, there's the Baird's tapir, the Mountain tapir, and one of these guys. This is a Brazilian tapir, otherwise known as a lowland tapir. These are the largest terrestrial mammal that live in South America. Now, being a Brazilian tapir, you'd expect he only lives in Brazil. However, these guys are actually quite, quite wide dispersed all across South America. In fact, you can go as north as Venezuela and the Guyanas, all the way down to places like Paraguay. And even then, you can go across to places like Peru and Bolivia, and you will find these animals. Now, all of the other tapirs, except for the Malaysian tapirs, are also found in South America, but they are a little bit rarer. Now, most people get quite confused with these animals. They actually think they're related to pigs in some way, or maybe not, some people actually believe they're related to elephants because they've got a slight trunk at the front. When actually, they're more closely related to horses or even rhinos because they're something called an odd-toed ungulate. It means that they've got four toes on their front foot and three on their back, while even-toed have even across both feet, just like a pig. Now, having this trunk at the front is very important. It's actually prehensile, which which basically means they can grip things with it. They're actually known for using it to rip uh, fruit off plants. Um, and what they eat is really, really important. They are completely herbivorous, which means they eat plants and fruit. And they're actually known as the gardeners of the forest. And that's because when they eat the food, um, they like to walk and forage for quite a large amount of space. So what they'll do is they'll eat it uh, and it will get digested in the stomach and when they defecate or go for a poo they actually replant the seeds all across the forest. So they're really important for spreading diversity of plants across a forest biome. Now unfortunately, being such a large size, they're actually prey for a lot of animals. They're prey for things like jaguar and puma, which will quite happily try and take these animals down. But they have got a defence mechanism. They are very strong swimmers. In fact, they can actually walk across the bottom of a pond or lake. They're quite incredible animals. However, even though they're very good at hiding in the water, it doesn't actually get rid of all the threats. In fact, it can increase it because things like black caiman or even a green anaconda will see these guys as a food source. So unfortunately, they are sought after as prey. Now, it isn't just other animals that these guys have to worry about, it's also us as people. One of the biggest threats to tapirs at the moment is being uh, hunted by people for meat. Obviously, there is a lot of meat on them. However, it's not just harvesting for food that these animals need to worry about us for. They are also part of big issues like road traffic collisions, uh, as well as forest clearance uh, and us destroying their habitat. Now, here at Dudley Zoo, we have supported the Lowland Tapir Conservation Initiative for a few years now. It's a fantastic charity that's run all throughout Brazil. And their aim, using the tapirs and using radio colours on them, is to see how they use different biomes. Uh, when I say a biome, one of them is the Amazon rainforest, one of them is the Atlantic forest, which is further down south of Brazil by Rio de Janeiro. The Cerrado, which is large open grasslands, and the Pantanal, which is huge wetland spaces, which these animals call home. Now, by radio tracking them, they can see how far they're moving. They can also see if they are being preyed on or if they're being hunted by us. It is a fantastic research charity that's doing amazing work out there, and it's been recognised by a lot of different conservation organisations. Now, I won't leave you without telling you some fun facts about our tapir friends. My fir first fun fact, number one, is the use of that trunk. As I said, it is prehensile and they love to swim, but what they can do is they can dive underwater and use it as a snorkel, so they can still breathe and hide from any prey on land. Now my sa second favourite fact is they're actually quite prehistoric animals. In fact, the earliest tapir fossils date back 20 million years, and they haven't really changed much since then. Um, they're quite basic as mammals come, but they are absolutely lovely, and it's because they're so old that when the planet was just one giant continent, that's how they spread quite happily across the continent. So that's why there's one in Southeast Asia and why most of the rest are in South America. 
And my fun fact number three is about their youngsters. Now we've been lucky to have youngsters in the past here at the zoo and fingers crossed in the future we can have more. But when they come out, they're perfectly camouflaged. Instead of just being this gray color, they have white stripes all across them. And that is in order to camouflage it in with the light coming through the forest and the trees. So it looks like dappled light across their bodies and it hides them perfectly from prey. From me and this guy, thank you very much.